X-Men 97 hasn't been shy about throwing shocking twists at the end of episodes, and the fifth episode, titled Remember It, maintains this tradition. In the last part of the episode, a violent sentinel attack on the mutant city of Genosha leaves a couple of key X-Men members seemingly dead. In this video, we'll explore whether they're actually dead, or if there's a possibility of them reappearing in future episodes. We'll also take a quick look at similar events from the comic books, which can be a valuable clue because the series has been incredibly faithful to the original storyline so far. There will be major spoilers along the way, and this is, in our opinion, the best episode of X-Men 97 so far, so heads up, we highly recommend you watch it before proceeding any further. And, you know, before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. It's a small click for you, but it helps us bring you the best Marvelous content in the future. Thanks so much, let's get into it. How does Magneto fall in X-Men 97, and what is the nearest parallel in the comics? The fifth episode of X-Men 97 starts off on a positive note as we see a newfound effort in forging a peaceful and accepting relationship between humans and mutants. The UN has formally decided to welcome the mutant nation of Genosha as a member, and in order to witness this historic moment, Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit fly to Genosha. They are offered a warm welcome, and Magneto is even requested to step up as Chancellor of the mutant nation. Just when things seem to be going perfect for the future of the human mutant Bonhomie, Madeline Pryor, who is now a member of the Council, Council at Genosha is paid a surprise visit by Cable, her son from the future. He appears briefly and is only able to warn her with a quick, he is coming. We soon find out what he really means when a devastating sentinel attack takes everyone by surprise and gives a brutal touch to the episode. Led by a giant sentinel, the attack takes a severe toll on Genosha and many, including the leader of the Morlocks, Callisto, the leader of the Hellfire Club, Sebastian Shaw, and Banshee, are reported dead. During the final stages of this unexpected sentinel attack, a small group of Morlocks are trapped and the giant sentinel targets Tommy and Leech. Magneto saves them from the brink of death as he builds a protective shield around these Morlocks. Meanwhile, Rogue and Gambit try to help his efforts, but they are captured in a metal prison by Magneto, so their lives aren't at risk. Magneto's heroics work for some time, but eventually, the powerful sentinel detects him as an Omega-level mutant and breaks through his shield. A powerful energy blast triggers a massive explosion, which seemingly kills him and the mutants that he was protecting. But we all know that there is no permanence when it comes to the death of such key characters. In the comics, characters are killed off and revived according to the whims and fancies of the writers, and Magneto's case is usually no different. During the crucial E is for Extinction event in the comic books, Professor Xavier's evil twin sister Cassandra Nova launches a scathing attack on Genosha and eliminates millions of mutants. During this massacre, Magneto is seemingly killed, but it's later revealed that he managed to survive helped by his followers. We can see the similarity between this event and what happened in the episode, and the only potential change can be hinted from the statement of Cable, where he says he is coming in his warning, and not she. Of course, he could have been referring to someone else, and a little twist from the comic books can show someone like Mr. Sinister being responsible for the attack. Whatever the case may be, there's a strong likelihood that Magneto will be back pretty soon, and it's also evident from the fact that we are never shown his dead body. As an Omega-level mutant, killing Magneto isn't exactly a cakewalk, and we expect him to return as the leader of the X-Men once again, just like he was revived in the comics. What leads to Gambit's death, and what does the comic book narrative imply about his future? You would think that Rogue would get some respite after the apparent death of one of her love interests, but her love triangle is soon reduced to a single point when Gambit is the next to fall. Rogue is enraged by the death of Magneto and the Morlocks, and she charges the powerful Sentinel leader. Earlier in the episode, Rogue had broken things off with Gambit, and though she had changed her mind, she never got the chance to tell him that before Gambit pushed her out of the way and charged the mutant-killing monster himself. However, However, the gigantic sentinel proves to be far more powerful, and Gambit is impaled in a shocking turn of events. He makes the choice to go down with his enemy, and uses his mutant abilities to supercharge the sentinel, which results in an explosion that destroys them both. The last scene of the episode shows Rogue mourning his death as she sits helplessly with his lifeless body in his arms. In the comic books, the Knights of X story arc killed Gambit, but this happened in the other world, which made his resurrection process pretty simple. The X-Men managed to bring him back, and in the current X-Men comic book story arcs, he's alive 
and kicking and establishing his own team. In contrast, X-Men 97 shows him dying in the real world, which makes a reversal of his death all the more difficult. The way his death is shown is also quite decisive, and we see the signs of his lifeless body as a clear confirmation. Of course, anything can happen going ahead, especially with time travel involved. A miraculous revival can't be ruled out completely, but we'd put money that this is the end of the road for Gambit in X-Men 97. Have to get everyone out! Now! He's coming! Who's coming? I see Cable! What's going on? Could Cable fashion a revival for Magneto in Gambit? This is a tried and tested formula for both Marvel and DC, where characters who are dead are brought back by introducing time travel into the picture. Here in X-Men 97, before the attack on Genosha takes place, Cable appears briefly in an effort to warn his mother, Madeline Pryor. She's able to recognize her son by his eyes, and her brief moment of respite at having realized that her son is safe in the future is interrupted by a violent sentinel attack. It turns out that Cable is a little too late in his warning, and he's quickly pulled back into his timeline after barely uttering a word of a apology for his delay. However, now that Cable has been reintroduced to the story, time travel can be an angle that the show can explore going forward. What if Cable re-attempts his warning, and this time he arrives way ahead of time to give the X-Men and other mutants sufficient time to prepare for the attack? This could reverse the entire course of events, and even the deaths of Magneto and Gambit. That being said, this outcome seems unlikely, because the time is so short, and this would mean dwelling on the same story arc for too long. It doesn't seem like a feasible option for a show with so few episodes, and going by the titles of the next couple of episodes, we probably won't see much of this story arc at all as the plot is set to move to Storm and Forge. The X-Men fans would love to see both Gambit and Magneto making a comeback, but as of now, the chances of Cable attempting something as bizarre as another time travel fix seems unlikely. Marvelous Verdict! The death of Magneto and Gambit will keep you guessing. Even though X-Men 97 has been faithful to the comic books, there are some extremely clever twists introduced in the narrative which make things unpredictable. It's the same with the deaths of Magneto and Gambit, because even though there are somewhat similar instances in the comic books, the circumstances are different. This episode is easily one of the best of the series so far, and we love how the story sets up greater villains like Apocalypse or Xavier's twisted twin sister appearing in future episodes. And as for the deaths of Magneto and Gambit, Gambit, we believe that you'll see Magneto reappear very soon because there hasn't been any clear signs of his death. On the other hand, there is a slight chance that this is the end of the line for Gambit, unless he's resurrected by Apocalypse or some other force, as it happens in the comics. I mean, they killed Morph in the first episode of the original series, and he's back and a permanent member of the team now, so anything can happen. There's not much time in the few remaining episodes of Season 1 to wrap up these storylines, but we're so excited to see how it all ends. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the apparent death of Gambit and Magneto, and tell us what you think about their future in the series. Also, we'd love to hear if you agree with us about the fifth episode being the best in the series so far. That's all for now, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.